Welcome to another episode of That Some Crazy Shit with Kelly and James. I'm Kelly, obviously, and my co-host is me, Mr. James, in the corner studio. Mr. James in the corner studio. What's up, dude? Hey, things are going well over here. How's it going over there? Things are excellente. I cannot complain. Life is good. Life is Life really is good. good. Life, Life has been good. good. You know... Think- uh, you know, I like when we have guests come on that like to talk about stuff that I like to talk about, things that we don't normally talk about. James, what are things we normally do not talk about? Politics and religion. Why don't we talk about those things? Because people get too passionate and don't really speak and talk with each other. They just yell at each other and there's no constructive conversation. Yeah, because everybody thinks they're right, maybe. That too. Or maybe people get uncomfortable when you question their beliefs. And that, you know, they shouldn't know, because if you believe something, question all you want. I don't give a shit. Right. Or when you disagree with their belief or when they believe that what they believe is in what you're doing is wrong or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and this has been my thing with religion. You know, it's like. You know, you can you can believe whatever you want, but that doesn't give you the right to make me believe what you want. True. Or if I don't believe what you believe, you don't want to have anything to do with me. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have that than have them just sit and rail on me, though. Leave True. me alone. If you don't, you know, I'd rather you just leave me alone than sit and try and convince me or, or shove something down my throat, shove your beliefs down my throat. Yeah. So we have a guest on today that actually wrote a book. Um, She is actually an ordained reverend. Her name is Chandrika Fee. And she wrote a book called Lord, I Don't Want to Die a Christian. Oh, I love the title. And so she is on just to talk about her views. And, you know, religion falls under the umbrella of crazy shit. Not that saying that anybody's religion is crazy. No, Not saying that religion itself is crazy. I'm saying that all the all the beliefs that there's so many different religions out there so many so many beliefs and all these things going on that it just falls in that realm of wow crazy shit it is crazy shit because what's crazy is they all have the basic thing in uh, that uh, they're all tied together you know yeah, they're all kind Bas- of the same but different yeah it's like you know the goal is to get to heaven or wherever your destination is you know and to be a good person along the way, you know? Yeah. So, so what, I don't know what's so hard about, you know, your X and I'm Y religion, and we just can't both do our thing and get along. I agree. But anyway, we're going to bring Chandrika on, and she's going to talk about her book and her experiences. Are you ready? I'm ready. Welcome to the podcast, ordained minister and author, Chandrika B. Chandrika, thank you so much for being a part of that some crazy shit. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So, you know, me and James have been doing this podcast for, I don't know, two, two, three years. We've really um, kind of expanded the umbrella on what we deem as crazy shit. We started off just paranormal. Now we realize the whole world is crazy. (laughs) <laughs> um, but we want to know, what what do you bring to us to the podcast today? Well, you know, I saw the title of the podcast, and and let me start off by, by saying that uh, cussing, if you will, is not my, it's not a norm for me. I have cussed. It won't be the last time. Uh, you know. <laughs> However... Um, it's not the norm for me. It's not. I, I, for me to cuss, interestingly enough, um, I probably am guaranteed to cuss about religion. Um, I'm very passionate about um, religion and evolving out of it um, or evolving from it. So um, when I saw this title, I thought about something I wrote about in my book. Um, the name of my book is called Lord, I Don't Want to Die a Christian. And I wrote a chapter in the book called A God Like This. And and so when I saw the title of the podcast, I thought about um, the, the, uh, I guess, the center of 
the reason I wrote that chapter, which was about um, Christian parents and, and people, really two Christians coming together who in most cases believe in hell, believe in eternal damnation, but they still choose to have children. And I looked at Josh title and thought, that, that, <laughs> so that's, that's some crazy, crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, that fits the definition. It does. But when you think about it, you're right. You know, you have all this doom and gloom, right? right. But yet right. people still, still, you know, choose to have children. But religion, organized religion, and me and James don't talk about religion a lot. We decided yeah. at the beginning of the podcast that we were going to stay away from religion and politics because we didn't want to offend anybody. But we have now found that those are two fall in the realm of crazy shit. So we do yeah. find ourselves talking about it from time to time. Right. Um, for religion, I my personal views on organized religion is it kind of sets you up for failure. Wow. Say more. I love that. I love you know talking. because if you don't follow these specified rules, you're damned. And yeah. you know it's really hard to go through life following the rules that the Bible has laid forth or any doctrine has laid forth and live the life that we live in today's world. It is almost impossible. So I feel like there's no, there's, you can never be successful. You can try to be this great, holy, perfect person. But to say that you're never going to do some of the the, the sins or right. never sin is right. is just, it's, it's unfeasible. So if the only way that you can get into heaven is to be this perfect person, then we're all doomed because none of us are perfect. None of us will get there if we're going by the Bible. So I always thought it set you up for failure. That was always my thing. And I don't really tell people a lot because they tend to get a little offended when you go <laughs> down the, uh, the religion and my views on religion. So I, I pretty much keep them to myself. Wow. What do you think, James? What do you think about... I, I was... You know, when it occurred to me that um, that because I, I again I write about being born a Christian I write about being born into a Christian family and never having any other choice so I didn't choose Christianity um, it was chosen for me um, but then to think that my parents who uh, believe in hell I mean my father uh, preached it like nobody I'd ever heard before preached heaven and hell um, and the details you would you would think that he had been before, um, and so uh, to either to either um, concepts, um, but to think that believing having such a conviction to plan a family um, in a world that is free, that um, you can make your own decisions in a world where. Um, the decisions of adults are unpredictable. Like we're, we were gonna grow up one day and decide and make our own decisions. Why not leave us in heaven if that's where we came from, where that's a safe place? Why bring us into the world where we, you have uh, the freedom to choose um, and risk children choosing in a way that would lead them to eternal damnation? That's an interesting take. Um, where where I'm from, relig- there's a dominant religion. There's two, and I, I was like you. It was my religion was chosen for me by my parents. Mm-hmm. But I was I was really lucky because my my mom still had an open mind where she was going to let me decide if I wanted to go or not. Where my dad was more, he wanted me to go. And at a very young age, I used to ask questions. You know, Kelly and I talked about this. Uh, is Abraham? Abraham, excuse me, is going to sacrifice his son. Is that is that correct? I don't know. Yes, yes. But at, at a very young age, I always thought, well, why would your God want you to sacrifice your son? And I started questioning very young. And so as I've gotten older, I've, I've put the difference there. People who are religious and people who are spiritual, and I tend to say I'm more spiritual. So. I think it's interesting, and I like. And I, I want to ask you a question though. What at what age were you when you decided you didn't want to die a Christian? I think you'll you'll be uh, entertained um, to know 
that it was it was in my 40s, 30s, late 30s, early 40s. I had an opportunity to go and live in China after being ordained and, um, or at least licensed, um, licensed minister, getting my degree in biblical studies. Um, I had every plan on uh, preaching, teaching, um, pastoring Christian religion. I prepared myself for that. It's all I was prepared to do. Um, I didn't know anything else um, being a pastor's kid. I didn't know anything else but Christianity, church, black church, that kind of expression. And so um, I had an opportunity to go to China and that being in China woke my curiosity up. Um, Being away from everything that reinforced what I had been taught um, woke my curiosity up, especially being in a country that is not uh, that doesn't celebrate doesn't embrace Christianity. So very think, few, oh, very few in China oh, are yeah. Christian. Very yeah. few. Right. right. What is the what is the dominant religion in China? Is it Buddhist? I think it's Buddhism. Buddhism. Yeah. Um, and that's what they would like. Um, you know, I I wouldn't say I I don't know what the numbers are, um, because a lot of Christianity is underground in China, um, and they have to be. So when I was there, I had to figure out how to be what I believed um, without showing it, you know, because a lot of religion of what religion is here in the States is showing it. A lot of us don't really believe what we've been taught. We just wear it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We just wear it. Nice facade. Right. We wear what we've been taught. We wear it around our necks. We put it on our cars. We wear it on our clothing. Uh, we wear it on, you know, our jewelry. It's out in our front yard, um, you know. So as long as we have um, a, some sort of tangible representation here, we don't necessarily have to have to be exactly what we believe. So um, in China, I couldn't carry my Bible everywhere I went, like I did here in the states. Um, so now, who am I without it? Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the jacket that I wore that had uh, God's got your back on it. It drew attention from the government police. So they would follow me. So I couldn't wear that anymore if I not if I wanted to stay. Um, so just the things that I was I, I was doing here in the States because I had the freedom to do it. Um, it was drawing undesired attention over in China. So now, but then after disrobing myself of it, I did not know who I was without it. Wow. And that's deep because you have to know who you are outside of your religion. Right. Right. I did. not. Who was I without all of all of the trappings, if you will, the dressings, the the uh, decorations of Christianity. And so I had to ask myself that question. Who Who was I without all of it, without the roles that I played in church? I was the pastor of. Uh, um, music and arts um, at one point. I was the minister of outreach at one point. I was a praise and worship leader. I had all these titles. I played all these roles. Now I'm in China. Not only do I not have the roles, but neither can I carry this stuff around that represents Christianity. Uh, Not and stay. I could do it, but it won't be, I won't stay in peace. So, you know, just so many things I had to get rid of. And when I had to shake it all, there was nothing left. Who was I? Well, yeah. so I had to go on the journey of a- asking myself that question. Mm. And what I learned was is that I, I wasn't a Christian. Um, you know, that God didn't see me as that. Yeah. I, go ahead, Jeff. Say, Kelly and I have talked about, hey, you know, everyone, I think, our, our destination is the same thing. You know, we all want to be a, 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 you know, at peace with who we are. But how we get there, the path we take is so different. Yes. You know, they don't have to be the same. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's nice when um, you can look at someone else's path and see, you know what, it's working for them. We're all going to get there together eventually. Yeah. You know, yeah, but, but you I, also shouldn't, James, have to be persecuted for what you do or do not oh, believe. Oh, oh, yeah, and, and religion should be part of that. You know, I mean, I think it's like it's a spiritual journey for me. You know, I agree. I you know, I, 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 I am not a Christian, but when I lived in Atlanta, that's when I, you know, never have lived in the South and being in the Bible Belt and just 
really thrown into Christianity and people would come up to me and ask me, you know, where's your church home? And I had no, I had never heard this term before. I don't know what a church home is. What is a church home? Mm-hmm. Right? So I didn't know what a church home was. And then when they found out that I technically wasn't a Christian, the attitudes would change. Mm-hmm. So as Christians, you are now judging me who is not a Christian. Mm-hmm. And now you want nothing to do with me because now I'm less than because I'm not like you. I'm different than you. And I noticed that a lot of them, ne- nobody ever bothered to find out what it was. They just knew that it was. And that was enough for them. It's different. We're done. And so and that was always my problem with Christianity sometimes is that for a religion that says it's so compassionate and understanding and welcoming when they encounter something that's different then you are in a sense shunned and i never liked that about organized religion because different is what makes us all so very unique and if we were all the same what a boring world we would live in i i mean i really couldn't have said it better And I I kind of don't even know how to add to it because it it literally is the way I feel, you know, I I can add to it this way. Um, The Grammys this last week, uh, Christianity, um, a lot of and I want to be specific because I don't I don't want to be unfair to the to the religion altogether. I only heard from or about um, black church Christianity. Um, about Sam Smith's performance and uh, Maverick City performing on the same stage, Kurt Franklin being at the Grammys, and Christianity or Black Church Christianity um, having a problem with Sam Smith's uh, performance and uh, Kurt Franklin. And I don't think Kurt Franklin performed, uh, but Maverick City is a worship group. Um, they performed on the same stage, and and. You know, so many voices, uh, black church voices. I have to be specific about that um, because I, I want to be fair to the overall organized religion. Um, uh, and maybe everybody didn't say something. I just know what I heard. Uh, but they had so much to say. And I just kept, I was so disgusted because I thought everybody deserves to be entertained. Why are we wanting the Grammys to shape itself around your beliefs? Exactly. Well, but in the in the mm. Grammys is a non-religious entity that is I mean, there to that is there to what um, celebrate showcase music. and celebrate artists, art, right? Yeah. Right, art. It, but but they in st- even still with that, you know, there's this de- desire to to uh, mold it's entertainment around, um, you know, the toes, if you will, that's great. The toes of Christianity, please don't step on my toes. Please don't offend us. We're offended. Like, turn. so literally I saw Sam, this is a whole nother story, but I saw Sam Smith come on screen. I enjoyed the Grammys completely from beginning to end. I think Sam Smith's performance is probably the only one I didn't watch. And I didn't turn the television, I just focused on something else. Um, But he was dressed as, I shouldn't say that, he was dressed in red, he had a hat with horns on it. Um, And I think he performed, I think they say he performed with a trans woman. A transgender named Kim Petra, which is the first of her kind to win a Grammy. And the name of the song is called Unholy. Yeah, all of those things. Yes, yeah. <laughs> those details. I do remember the name of the song, and so um, I just I, I I didn't. It wasn't even that I chose to not watch it because of um, the costume or the uh, uh, dynamics of it all, um, the history making of it all. It just wasn't for me. Right. That's it. And mind you, if I was, you know, if not, if not watching it was about being offended, I would have turned the TV, turned the channel. I wouldn't even give the Grammys my ratings. You know, I wouldn't have been a part of the ratings in that moment. It, so I just focused on something else because the performance, it just didn't appeal to me. You know, I just thought we are so, I shouldn't say we, Christianity has such a small mind because no, none of us have seen this devil. So he coming out dressed like the devil. What? 
<laughs> what is, that, yeah, that's in your interpretation of it. Yeah. Right. What, so, so you know, he coming out dressed like the devil, and then he performing with a one man. That's just, you know, there are are transgender people who deserve to be entertained. There, but there are, are also transgender people who would consider themselves to be Christian. All, all of that. All right. Of that. And I, there's, you know, just a lack of. Uh, uh, awareness or concern or appreciation even for diversity even if you don't agree all of the world is not going to be Christian no all of the world is not Christian but again it's the diversity when I accepted that I stopped working on trying to make everybody Christian that I met Mm. I, I freed myself or that freed me realizing that all of the world's not going to be Christian. I stopped try- I stopped participating in outreach and evangelism. I stopped. Mm. What were you going to say, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, Kelly made an interesting comment saying, you know, transvestites or transsexuals or whatever. The Transgender is the term, Excuse sir. Excuse me. <laughs> Transgender. Mm-hmm. Um, we're Christians, but do Christians consider transgender to be Christians? No. See, that's the thing. No, you, no, 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 no. There's, there's a pastor. There's a pastor. I think that has gone viral. He's talking about how, um, how Christianity could take a note, a page from um, the transgender, uh, homosexual community for still wanting to be a part of congregations, Christian congregations. He's like, I, the, he's imagine the courage it takes to be where you are not accepted. You know, that's funny that you say that. I used to work with um, somebody who so badly, uh, they were excommunicated from their church for whatever reason, and they fought tooth and nail to get back in. And that was the one question that I could not understand. Why are you wanting so badly to be a part of something that really did not want you? Because they 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 got rid of you. You broke a rule. There was no compassion. There was no nothing. You're just out. And now you have to jump through all these hoops to get back in. And I never understood why. Like what what was it? Uh, you know, my I, I was lucky. My my mom was in the church, sang in the choir. My sisters did. Grew up Baptist went to the black church, but from a very, very, very young age, it never felt right to me. It always made me feel uncomfortable because when I would have questions, I was told to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And I was I was not, an- these are not questions for me to be answering. Who am I to question God and whoop de whoop what and all this stuff. And so it just, it never made me feel welcomed, not at all. Um, and so it just was never something that I embarked on. I never... My, my mom always told me at a very young age, you know, as far as getting baptized or anything, that's up to you. I'm not going to take that from you. And I've given that choice to my children as well. That is completely up to you. You need to find out what works for you because, you know, just because I, just because what works for me, it may not, you may not believe it. It may not work for you. I believe that you have to go out and find your own path and work and do what works for you. Because James is right. Our journeys are all different, but I think our goals are all the same. Good, that's good. I, I, when I say my curiosity inhaled in China, it exhaled in the States. Literally, the book is me writing out, is sharing all of the questions I have. And you're talking about questions I have after going to Bible college and graduating, questions I have after receiving my minister's license, questions I have after being baptized, questions I have after being ordained. <clears throat> forever ordained. I will forever be ordained. It's I will never have to re you know redo that again, renew that again. And I didn't realize that I had all these questions. But it wasn't until I was in my 30s and 40s that I really started to entertain them, to entertain my intellect, to really involve involve my intelligence. Um to really to really even kind of be introduced to my intelligence. I didn't know I was this smart. I didn't know I was this intelligent. What I didn't in know, China I made didn't you? Know I was intellectual. I didn't what, know I was a thinker. <laughs> what in China made you start to really kind of question, like what was going on? What were they doing that was like, wow? It what it was what they weren't doing. Wow. That was like wow. It was it was 
the the lack of of uh the lack of access to everything we do in the states that mm. made me ask the question because I was living without all of this. I was living without communion every first Sunday. I was living without hearing about the devil every time we gathered. I was living without, there was something else. Oh, I was living without tithing. What? <laughs> and, and where we come from, that's a big thing, tithing. I didn't have it to tithe. I worked for a university who paid me in yuan. They paid me. I didn't get paid in, in uh, U.S. currency. Oh, yeah. I got paid in yuan. There was, so I didn't have the money to tithe. I didn't have a place to tithe because again, we don't celebrate Christianity. There's no celebration of Christianity. There, there was a place to gather for Christians in China, but it wasn't that, that place to gather is not even about um, embracing Christianity. It's about monitoring Christianity. Mm. They wanted to monitor right. the growth. So the, the, the place is built um, were built by the government, not like we like again access. Anybody can put a church on the corner nowadays. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You can't do that in China. So, so I wasn't tithing, and my life was I was experiencing um, uh, a freedom and a provision that I had never experienced before. And I had been tithing for as long as I made money. From the time I was 16, 17 years old, when my parents made me go to work, they made sure I tithed, until I went to China, I was tithing. But but was struggling all the way. And I get to China, I'm not tithing no more. And life now, as, as uh, the old saints, the old Christians used to say, life now is sweet, my joy is complete. <laughs> You know, and so, um, you know, all of these, I was just having a different experience because of what wasn't happening there, not because of what was happening. Mm. And it made me start asking questions, especially after I came back to the States um, after my first year there, went back to church and experienced culture shock, which then probed, made me push me to ask more questions about the things I had been taught. Did so, you, did, oh, go ahead, uh, James. Thanks. Um, when I lost my train of thought now, sorry. <laughs> no, so when you were in China, did you take the time to learn or explore what it was like to be a Buddhist or learn about Buddhism? I didn't. I didn't. I I was so busy. So so the the journey to asking questions kind of started, like I said, after my first year. I was only going to stay one more year. However, I had started a Bible study with seven college students. Um, we had committed to uh, finish it, reading through the book of Luke. And that became what uh, the catalyst, if you will, to building relationships with my students. Um, the relationship building was the most important. Um, so I kept it going um, until we finished the book. Um, and then after, after my second year, I came back to the States. And that's again when when my curiosity exhaled. So if I could paint a picture, it would be my curiosity woke up and took a deep breath, but then held its breath the entire two years. And then I came back to the states and said, "What?" <laughs> like, you know, especially again after going back to church, trying to go back to what I knew, stand in those quote unquote four walls. Um, I got I got tired. I got. Um, claustrophobic, uh, looking at the same people every week, um, doing the same thing two or three days a week, um, and, and doing the same thing on a larger scale, but it's the same thing, just more people. Um, I got, I just got tired of that. And it, it just, that exhaustion continued to help me release what I had been holding in, you know, my curiosity, just, it just started to talk and I started writing. So how did it affect, how did your change affect the people around you? That's a great question. Um, woo, that's a real good question. I, I can't say that it has, I don't, I don't know. You know, nobody's come to me and said, said to people that are around me, haven't come to me and said, this is how, you know, I've been impacted. Um, it's being a church girl 
I mean, a, a serious church kid. A lot of my friendships were, they stem from that. So I don't have a lot of those friendships anymore because I said out loud, I don't want to die a Christian. Because mm. I think it, it takes courage. I think a lot of us feel the same way, but don't have the same courage. I would agree. Yeah. I, I think it does take courage to go and and say, well, for me, it took courage to say, I'm not going to be a part of any religion yes. because I need to find out what it is that I believe. Right. And I don't know what that is if you tell me what I believe. I have to go find out and I can read about it and I can do this and do that and and come to the conclusion that um, I had a friend one time who who became born again. And one day she came to my house and said that she was worried about my immortal soul. Never forget this conversation. Now, the day before, before she became saved, it, she didn't really care about my soul. But all of a sudden today, my soul is in question. And I remember her saying, you know, uh, Kelly, I'm, I'm worried about your soul. And I said, you know, my soul is cool because I have my relationship with God is between me and God. You know, we're cool. Me and God don't have no problems. And, you know, I think you should worry about your own soul because, you know, you can't do anything for mine. And it's things, when people have said things like that to me, it has made me realize that my journey is my journey. It is a private journey. It is my journey and it's not for you. And so it doesn't need your commentary, right? Or your approval. approval. I I think that would have been a a great place to to say again, the title of the show. After she, after she, she gives, she gets saved one day and comes to you the next and says she worried about you. Now that's so crazy. (laughs) (laughs) And it really is. And that's probably why me and James really don't talk about religion coming out of Salt Lake City, which is a very, you know, Utah is a very religious place. LDS are dominant. Um, yeah. Growing up with all religion, with that particular religion and what they believe, um, it, it really, it really made me want to go out and find what worked for me. Right, right, right. That was that, my catalyst. That really is, I think, the core of of my story is what do what do I believe? What do I believe about me? Who am I? Who is, you know, do I believe in God? Uh, Why do I believe in God? What do I believe about Jesus? What do I believe about church? I mean, I just, I had to, I revisited all of those, those, um, those beliefs and the things that Christianity taught me. And I just, you know, the best thing I, I figured I should document this. Surely I'm not the only one who is going through this. And I thought, um, you know, from my journey, from a, a child who was born into this on the front row, um, who uh, pursued uh, Christian clergy um, at the, at you know, uh, as a passion, now has questions. So, um, you know, I documented my journey for other people to be able to, to have something to refer to. What is the name of the book again? Lord. I don't want to die a Christian. My journal and journey to freedom. And when did you publish it? It was published. Uh, it would be two years ago. Two years. It would, this year would be two years ago. Any twenty one November. Are you looking to do like a follow up to it? Uh, maybe some more writing. I don't know if I'll do any follow up to this book. I am, um, I did partner with someone to release another literary work, um, but it's not, it's not my story. Now, before we go, Chandrik, I have to ask, because this is my thing, (laughs) do you believe in Bigfoot, yes or no? (laughs) I would believe in Bigfoot if I saw him. (laughs) <laughs> right, that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm that, taking tallies. That is James's thing. That is his thing. You know, thank you for coming on and, you know, letting us talk about religion because we don't talk about it a lot because we don't want to offend anybody, right? You know, and, and, and sometimes and, it gets heated between people when they don't have to it say the even. And and my thing is is that I'm not down I'm not downing anybody for what they believe. You believe whatever you believe, whatever works for you, whatever gets you there. I'm all for it. 
you know, I just think sometimes it's nice to be able to have the conversations right. and in a safe place where you feel like you're not going to be judged or attacked because you don't believe what I don't believe what you believe and vice versa. Right. We can and just simply we, have the conversation. And we have to keep in mind while one may be offended, another needed to hear it. Right. You know what? That that is so very, very, very true. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Enjoyed having you. Tell us the name of the book one more time. Lord, I don't want to die a Christian. My and, journal and journey to freedom. It and is it's, Amazon. It's gonna say available everywhere. Yes, it's available everywhere. Just Google it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming yes, on. Thank you, Tendrika. Thank you both for having me. You know, that was pretty intense. How would it be to go to China, not be able to practice your religion, and because you can't practice your religion, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are outside of your religion. That's deep. That is deep, because I've never been that into religion. Me neither. You know, but there are people who are like that, obviously. (laughs) And... She was like, who was I? She was like, who was I without that? I was like, wow. You know, I mean, I guess hearing somebody else's experience just really made me realize that, you know, yeah, who who are you without your religion? Because I don't have a religion. I know, I think I know who I am. And I'd like to ask, you know, my religion, who are they without me? Oh, Okay. But yeah, I don't. I really don't have a religion either. Oh well, I guess then the religion. Well, you know what? I actually looked it up one day. There are over two thousand religions, right? That are recognized. That are recognized. Two thousand, and I thought it was very interesting. The one that I remember the most because it just made me chuckle was the uh, the uh, the Jedi. That's oh, a real yeah, religion. The Order of the Jedi, yeah. The Order of the Jedi is a real religion. You can join, and Jedi are very similar. Uh, to Buddhist, believe it or not, and yep. what they believe, their beliefs, the force, and all that good stuff. So I just thought it was interesting. But yeah, there's a bunch of religions out there. You can go join any one of them. But if you do, please don't force your beliefs on other people or me. Okay. That's just not cool. Not at all. You know, I just don't like that. And okay. where we where we're from, <clears throat> we are force fed the, the predominant religion here, which is LDS, Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, whatever you want to call them. And I get frustrated because they want to legislate morality. So if I don't if I don't think I should drink or smoke because of my religion. I'm going to pass laws so that you can't drink or you can't smoke, regardless of what your religion is. And I think that's bullshit. I would 100% agree with you. Um, yeah, well, you know, that's what happens when, you know, they figure that's their, that's, their, that's their town, that's their place. They can do whatever they want. And, you know, when I was growing up, I had never heard this anyplace else, but they always talked about separation of church and state. Yeah, whatever. Not fucking here. <laughs> Just telling you. Just oh, I know, you. but it, and it cracks me up when people say that. Oh, it's separation. No, not in Utah. It's not. It's one and the same. Then you're probably closer to the truth than anybody, James, right there. I I'm living the truth, my friend. Yeah, well, you and lots of others. Some like it yeah. though. That's true, and that's you know that's on them. If that if it you know what if organized religion works for you. And you're not hurting anyone else. Go for it, man. Hundred percent. Well, whatever like gets said, you there. Whatever yeah, gets what, you there. Yeah, whatever gets you there. But just make sure you're not trying to prevent me from getting there or tripping me up or whatever. Just let me do my thing. Or judging how I choose to get there. How about that? Right. You know. You know. And, let, and my thing too is, uh, you know, here, you know, they try to legislate morality. Okay, no drinking, no smoking. You know, all that shit. But my thing was, wasn't Jesus tempted at one time in his life? What does Jesus have to do with Mormons? Because they're the church of Jesus Christ, my friend. Oh. (laughs) And I'm just talking about general religion, you know. 
Uh, well, wasn't wasn't Jesus a man? Well, see, this is my point. Jesus had he 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 was tempted, and he was strong enough to resist the temptation. So how come these people who want to be Christ-like can't watch someone else drink? And not be tempted to drink, or you know what I'm saying? It's like if Jesus was tempted by whatever, and he could n- turn away from it, and you're so convinced and convicted to your religion, there should be sin and temptation around you, and you should be able to say, you know what? I won't do it because my religion says not to. You can, that's your choice, but I choose not to. I should make choices where you don't have the choice to make that choice. Is drinking a sin? Well, in the eyes of some people, it is. But is it drinking's not like a sin in the Bible? Didn't Jesus turn water into wine? Well, hey, man, there's a lot of shit that Jesus did in the Bible that people forget and kind of change and customize. That's just <laughs> the way just, the Bible I don't, is. I don't recall, and I don't recall is smoking a sin. I don't recall smoking in, being a sin. We're in Utah, remember, we're in Utah, man. If you're walking down the street having a good time, you're you're probably sinning, my friend. I don't is is having a good time a sin? in Utah. Oh. Well, I don't live there anymore. Oh, I know. That's what I'm telling you. And you know why? Because I like to have a good time. Yeah, and you a sinner. <laughs> Just admit it. You're a sinner. And I'm a sinner, so I had to get out. They were like, get out. No worries, though, James. I mean, and you know what? And that's the type of conversation that I think Hendrika's book will strike up, you know, that's a that's a that's a cool title. Lord, I don't want to die a Christian. You can get it on Amazon anywhere books are sold. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Interesting read. I might have to pick that up. You know, find out her. And then remember, this woman was ordained. She grew up in the church. And and still having questions. Yes, yeah, she's ordained her. She grew up in the church. Her father yeah, her was father. Yeah. yeah. So very interesting conversation. Appreciate her coming on the show love the conversation i got some random bullshit random bullshit well should we stay with the religion or should we go on to something oh uh, let's oh, go someplace I, else I, I, okay i got rods okay we're talking about rods okay so tell us people, tell us what these are okay so rods are what people believe are a new type of uh entity life form we're not sure what they are they range in size from six inches to several feet and think of it, they're called rods, so think of it as a rod, but then on the sides, it has almost fins or wings, so they, it swims through the air. They call them sky swimmers. And these have been, I saw this years and years ago, I was watching something on base jumping, and this guy was base jumping into a cave, and I saw one of these things go flying through the screen, and I was like, oh, that's a trip, I wonder what that was. And then I really didn't hear about it for years. And then this guy started studying them. And there are these rods that fly around everywhere, man. They, they, they can even go into water and stuff. It's crazy. Are they like birds? No. And it's funny because they've, they've uh, people have tried to say, or oh, they're birds, you know, it's uh, lens flash all this well these people set out and uh, his well I remember his name Carmelo I'm sorry I don't remember his name but he's the researcher he's he's the one who started doing the research like 20 years ago and um, they set up cameras and you'll see bugs flying through and birds and then you'll see this rod fly through and they look nothing like nothing and uh, it depends on your shutter speed and stuff on how how clear it can be but I mean these things fly so fast you know you can't even see them really or, or they fly so fast you think it's something else it's a trip have they ever caught one um in the documentary I watched it was called Rods and it was on Gaia um the woman claimed that she killed one and she sent the remains to this fellow who did the documentary and they didn't get the results of DNA back in time. And they said they were going to put the results on their DNA. But looking at the, what she said were the remains and kind of seeing how fast they are, I, I really doubt it she, that she killed it the way she did. Did she, she say how, like, you say how go, she caught it? 
It was flying around in her house. Okay, now I've never seen or heard of them being in homes. Because personally, when you see them flying outside, they're going too fast to be in a room. Okay. Be too small, you know. Right. So she said she was sitting on her couch and, you know, the corner of her eye she saw it. And then she felt something against her leg and she slapped it. And then she claimed it was this rod. And huh. then she put, put it in a specimen jar. And over the course of several days, it shrank up from like three inches or two inches, she said, to like maybe a quarter inch. And it was all weird looking. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. It, it is interesting. If you want to check it out, go to Gaia and watch Rod. Or if you, where the, is that their website that you can go to? Uh, his website is Roswell, as like Roswell the crash type, Roswell Rods. Dot com? Dot com. Go check it out. It's interesting shit, you guys. It's crazy. Never heard of it. So cool. Thanks, James. Hey, I'm here to give you all sorts of random bullshit, man. Right on. We appreciate it. So you can get us at check out our social media on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and we have a YouTube channel. Next week, Snapchat. Yeah, but not Snapchat. Um, Next week, James, we'll have another guest, as always. As always. As always. Do we know what what, what we're getting? No, I have no idea. Nope, we don't know. We just, you know, we don't know. We just dab, we just dig into the bag of guests. And see what comes out. All right, then. Manifest something, listeners. If you want us to talk about it, manifest it. Do it. All right, let's wrap it up. Okay, until next time, people. Keep your minds open. <laughs>